up, y'all? It's J. Kyle Daron, Stan Clay Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. We're going to do a recap over the fights that took place last week and also talk about the upcoming fights that are going down this Saturday, April the 23rd. HBO is going to telecast a doubleheader with first Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez taking on Puerto Rican flyweight McWilliams Arroyo. This is a fight right here that a lot of fight fans are not really respecting. They're saying that this guy, Arroyo, is nobody. This kid is a former Olympian for Puerto Rico, a very good amateur fighter, and now a professional that has two losses on his career, but he's a guy that has fought in the backyard of another world champion in Thailand, and he lost a very close decision when he dropped that world champion. Now, McWilliams is a solid fighter. This guy has very good boxing skills, and he has a pretty good punching power as well. He's a tough kid. He's going to come to fight, and I believe that he's going to be in the best condition that he's ever been for a professional fight. Against a guy like Chocolatito, that's another story. This kid right here is something special. He's a special type of fighter that comes along once in a while, like a great Ricardo Lopez. From 105 pounds to 108 pounds, and now he is the ruler of 112 pounds, defending his WBC world title. He is so precise when he's in that ring. Very sharp fighter with very good punching power, and he is a possible future Hall of Famer already with the credentials. He's beaten world champions already, and he's also beaten top contenders in those divisions. Now, he's looking to perhaps fight a rematch against a guy named Juan Francisco Estrada. HBO is trying to line up that fight, but it's going to cost $2 million to happen. That's something that hasn't happened in over 20 years since the days of Michael Carbajal versus Conchita Gonzalez. But the flyweight division has some very good solid fighters and this kid Arroyo is gonna come and he's gonna put on a fight. But against a guy like Chocolito Gonzalez, it's gonna be very hard to beat. So I look to Roman Gonzalez to have another spectacular stoppage, perhaps somewhere around the fifth or sixth round against this very game tough fighter from Puerto Rico in McWilliams Arroyo. Now, in the main event, we have Galeni Golovkin, Triple G, making his mandatory defense against Dominic Wade. Galeni Golovkin has now signed a deal with Michael Jordan's sport brand, and he is a phenomenal star that is growing in the media. Triple G is a very good fighter that was once an excellent amateur standout. Now, he is the ruler of the 160 pound division with two of the major world titles at 160 pounds. Triple G is looking for that fight against Canelo Alvarez. Now the WBC has said that they have already agreed to fight each other this fall. But first they will have to take care of business with Canelo fighting Amir Khan and Triple G fighting his mandatory to get that out of the way so that he could hold on to those titles and then fight for the WBC title against Canelo Alvarez. Because that's the fight that the fight fans are gearing up and very excited to see. I know I'm personally excited to see that fight because some people regard Canelo Alvarez as the man that's going to defeat Triple G. And a lot of people feel that Triple G will beat Canelo Alvarez. But we have to wait and see if that fight is going to take place this year. But business at hand, Triple G is just fighting another top contender. Not a big name because he's still waiting for those big names to fight him like Daniel Jacobs and also other guys like Billy Joe Sanders, which is a possible fight that can happen later on this year because his handlers are speaking to Triple G's handlers about staging a fight in England, perhaps in a big arena like Wimbledon Stadium, which would be a great, great look for Triple G because he's become a global international star right now. And his star is definitely rising as one of the faces of boxing. He is an exciting fighter when he steps into that ring. He has hard hitting punching power, a beautiful stiff jab, and he goes to the body very well. G is a strong middleweight and he is going to display that this weekend against a guy that's going to try to show that he has the hand speed and the boxing skills and also the punching power to try to shock the world by upsetting Triple G this weekend. But I don't think Dominic Wade is the man to handle that task. 
I believe he's going to probably put up a good fight. I haven't seen that much of Dominic Wade, but I expect Triple G to become victorious once again, take care of his mandatory, and hopefully get that big fight that he's been waiting for. Top Rank has been throwing the rumors around that they would love to match up Gilberto Ramirez, the newly crowned WBO super middleweight champion at 168 pounds. Triple G's people have said that they are willing to move up to 168 pounds to face the Mexican warrior that's undefeated. It's a very big fighter, but it's not that much of a big fight. I believe it's a very easy fight for Triple G just to claim another title in another division and perhaps make a big solid payday on HBO. Now, let's do a recap of the fights that took place this weekend. We're gonna talk about the robbery of the year when we saw light heavyweight prospect Marcus Brown get a gift decision against a fighter that was also undefeated and another prospect as well. But this kid put on a very good performance. He dropped Marcus Brown. He had Marcus Brown hurt several times in this fight. Marcus Brown did not look good. He did a lot of holding in this fight. He definitely did not win this fight and the judges made a very bad decision. It should be a rematch because that kid deserves a rematch after that performance that he put against Marcus Brown and Marcus Brown didn't show us anything at all. Now, the fight that was very exciting was a fight with Polish cruiserweight champion Golaski fighting against former world champion Steve Cunningham. This was an excellent fight where Cunningham was dropped four times in the fight and that was the basic cause for him losing this fight because he was very gamed in this fight. He put on a very good performance. Cunningham. exciting fight for the boxing fans he had a lot of support from the polish community that was on hand at the barclay center yours truly was there ringside and i got to see the fights and it was a very good night of boxing the main event of the night was errol spence jr who put on a great display of dominance when he stopped chris algieri in the fifth round now i gotta tell you right now a lot of people were saying including myself that this was a big test for Spence. Algeri has been in the ring with three big names, Ruslan Pavuknikov, Amir Khan, and also Manny Pacquiao. He was able to go 12 rounds with these guys, even though he lost those two fights and won the fight against Ruslan. It was a very good performance from Spence because of the fact that he was able to dominate him better than these other fighters dominate him, and he was able to stop him. Yeah, there was a hard left hand there, and that hurt him. And a nice uppercut by Spence. Spence going to work against the ropes. Algeria's hurt here, Kitty. Nice left hook by Chris, Chris Algeria. And all three rounds, Eric Grasco not officially scoring it for Spence, and going down Algeria. Homie has fought outside of the state of New York only one time. That last round, and he goes down. Jr. looked great with his body punches. I mean, those body punches were crisp. They were very hard. They were hurting him. Algeri was trying to move, but he just looked like he didn't have his legs that night. He was getting hit with some big, big shots. That sweeping left hook that landed perfectly on the chin of Algeri just put him down. This guy had nothing for Spence. Spence looked like a monster in that ring that night and my hat's off to him on a very good victory. You know, it's a small victory, but it was a big step for him because of the guys that he has been facing. He's been facing a lot of C-level fighters. He moved up to the B-level. He took care of business with ease. Now he is the mandatory challenger for IBF welterweight champion Kell Brook. But that fight is not going to take place anytime soon, especially this year. Kell Brook does not have to make that mandatory until early 2017. Kell Brook is looking for bigger and better names like Danny Garcia. And that's the fight that we hope that's going to be made in the summertime. But Errol Spence Jr. still has work to be done. Very impressive victory. He should get another good name fighter, perhaps Victor Ortiz 
or Andre Berto. That will be a very good matchup for him. Also, Adrian Brona is moving up to the 147 pound weight division once again. Brona has a big name. He's also a four-time division world champion. I believe he could beat Adrian Brona. I would love to see those two guys fight. A lot of people will criticize that fight saying that Adrian Brona is nobody. I mean, the guy has talent. He's just not dedicated. And it's still a big fight for Errol Spence Jr. I believe that fight will be an excellent fight on PBC or Showtime. Anywhere you put it, it's going to be a very good hot ticket seller. And people are going to go see that fight. He reminds me of Floyd Mayweather early in his career when he dispatched of a tough fighter by the name of Angel Manfredi in two rounds with ease. Manfredi back in the days wasn't that good of a fighter, but he was a tough, durable fighter, and Floyd was able to just destroy him with such ease, and that's how I saw this fight with Spence Jr. in Algeria. But there's still a lot of work to be done. He has to face the guys like Danny Garcia, Kel Brook, Keith Thurman before we could anoint him as the next great fighter pound for pound in our sport today. But that's my recap. I'm Jay Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel right here. Also, join that Facebook boxing group page, Jay Calderon Boxing Talk. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and subscribe.